Ranger L back here again. This will be Bitcoin 102. If you haven't seen 101, you need to watch it first. I ran out of time. So I left off at Bitcoin takes a lot of electricity. It takes on average in the United States four to five thousand dollars to make one Bitcoin. And then if you want to spend your Bitcoin or part of your Bitcoin, that takes approximately an entire week's worth of the average household electricity used in the United States. And then you have to go through an exchange because they're the only people that can convert your invisible Bitcoin from cyberspace and give you money for it. And the average, the average they want $100 to do that. So in the beginning, you heard like Bitcoin is going to be the new way we're going to buy stuff. I'm not thinking you're going to be buying a pizza anytime soon with your Bitcoin. But all of this reminds me of when I was a middle-aged man and this new thing came along called the Internet. And the hoopla over it, it was going to be the greatest thing since they put the eraser on the pencil. It was going to change the world. It was going to be just something else. And so the Internet was like the blockchain of today. And in order to use the Internet, you needed something called a browser. And the first browser was Netscape. Well, hokey doodle, everybody says you got to buy this Netscape. This stock is going to go to the moon, stars, and everywhere else. It would be what Bitcoin is today to the blockchain. Anybody using Netscape today? No. So then, after Netscape got going, a whole bunch of other browsers came along, and everyone's saying, we're better, we're faster, we're cheaper, use us. And that's kind of the same as all these other cryptocurrencies come along, saying, we're better, faster, cheaper than Bitcoin, and... Eventually, one of them is going to win out. So now you're on the internet with Netscape, but then you needed what was called a search engine. And people were Yahoo and AOL, and it was the same thing by this stock, by that stock. They're all going to the moon, the stars, and everywhere else. And Edgar Bronfman Jr. got so excited about this that he sold off his grandpappy's Seagram whiskey business and bought America Online, AOL, because he was going to make a fortune, a bigger fortune than he already had. He lost $80 billion. So that didn't really work out for him. He should have stuck with whiskey, because I'm still drinking it, and I'm sure that Seagram's is still profitable, whoever owns it. Ranger Al has seen this movie before, and I can tell you how it's going to end. And I can tell you which cryptocurrency is going to be the winner and which exchange is going to be the winner. And neither one of those have been discovered yet. But when they're discovered, the cryptocurrency that is going to win is going to be the one that is designed and operated by the government. And the exchange will be the one that is operated by the government. And being as they're the government, they will declare all other exchanges and all other cryptocurrencies illegal. And if you don't think that's going to happen, what you need to do is do a little homework and check out in 1932 the executive order that banned gold money. And it banned it from 33 to 71. And if you were caught with this gold money that the government had issued to you the year before, you could go to jail for 10 years, or the fine was $10,000 in 1933, which I'm thinking would be like, I don't know, a million dollars today. So I hope you found this video informational and informative, because that's what Ranger Al is all about. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I've only got 12 subscribers and I know that that's all. Christ only a 512 display. Anyway, like and subscribe. We'll talk to you later.